So for that reason, I decided in this last lecture to uh, say a few uh, more things about this very special ingredient, the second law, or the phenomenon of irreversibility, to remind you uh, that it is not only common, but it is comprehensible, and, um, and that uh, you know about it, even though it confuses your uh, peers. So I will uh, begin with, uh, with uh, friction as a phenomenon that uh, fits under this general category. In other words, friction as an example of irreversibility. And um, the most uh, familiar version of, uh, I don't know about you, but uh, did you ever have to rub two sticks to make a fire? I had to do that, you know, going fishing uh, at night on the banks of the Danube. And... Uh, discovering that I forgot the matchsticks at home. And it can be done, okay? You rub two things that are uh, completely dry, and uh, those things get hot. Uh, the, uh, uh, you have friction, the same idea, the same phenomenon in your car. Uh, the brakes, the brakes are um, um, two surfaces <coughs> that uh, rub uh, each other. One is, a, let's say, a disc, that's uh, driven by uh, power from, um, when you brake, the power comes from uh, the wheels. Um, and um, the friction is in, at the interface between the disc and the, um, the other surface. Well, uh, <laughs> everything you learn in this course uh, fits in the, uh, in that, uh, uh, any box called system, which is up to you to, to imagine. So this is uh, the system called any. You make, can make a joke out of this. Uh, somebody asks you, uh, uh, what is this uh, most uh, common uh, person you address in your course? Oh, his name is any. Yeah, any. Remember this, the uh, statement or the name of the most general, so general that it has no drawing. This happens to be one of the drawings that fits inside the, the most general box. And this is closed. It functions in a steady state, meaning that any uh, d over d, uh, d, dt about it is zero. It uh, absorbs um, uh, mechanical power called uh, work per unit time. We know this uh, from uh, the uh, general definition of a, uh, of a system, meaning graphic representation of a system in thermodynamics, that this kind of an arrow uh, speaks of uh, negative work transfer. Work is supposed to, come, to be coming out of the engine to us. Well, uh, this is not an engine. Uh, we have to uh, dissipate the work <clears throat> into heat transfer to the ambient. So there is a, uh, a place here, also known as uh, you and Adrian, receiving heat, in my case, uh, to light a fire at night. Um, and the uh, first law, remember, you're on stage, uh, the audience is uh, waiting for the joke. You might as well tell them, <laughs> begin by telling them something that's true. Two things, first law and the second law. First law is, uh, let me uh, write it per unit time, DE, meaning energy content or inventory of the system, uh, increases because of energy flowing in and decreases because of energy flowing out. Uh, the way I drew them, 
this is, again, contrary to the uh, sign convention of thermodynamics. Uh, the first law reduces to the um, uh, obvious thing, which is that uh, more power in is uh, more uh, heat generation to the ambient. So that's the first law. The second law, the way uh, that we've um, developed it analytically, is uh, a statement, meaning mathematical statement, of the strength of an inequality, which also really means the steepness of the descent uh, from high to low. And that uh, measures uh, the entropy generation rate, which is the um, difference between an entropy stream leaving, which in this case is uh, Q dot uh, over T0, minus uh, entropy stream entering, except that in this particular drawing, there's uh, no entropy entering because Work transfer uh, carries zero entropy. Only the heat transfer carries, in, in this uh, very simple uh, description of a closed system, only heat transfer carries entropy. And uh, the uh, second law is uh, this statement. That uh, that the system that any system of this uh, uh, character generates entropy, and uh, so that is uh, the uh, reason why I began with uh, with uh, the drawing, which shows that uh, the uh, the heat transfer rate must be leaving the system. You know already, and I, and I, know, I will not repeat, that uh, by combining the first law and the second law, uh, one arrives at uh, what in chapter three is called the combined law. Which, um, which is also known as the guis todela theorem. In this case, and all, all any other case, uh, there is uh, power lost in proportion with the entropy generation rate. So we have a um, analytical desc description and a way to measure irreversibility. If you want, to, if somebody asks you. Uh, how uh, how large uh, is uh, the irreversibility you are talking about? You tell them, well, the entropy generation rate in this uh, system that uh, that functions irreversibly, which means one way, that entropy generation rate is this, where the uh, the power lost because of irreversibility is this. In other words, in this case, uh, what? In this other case, for entropy generation alone, is watts per degree Kelvin. So, uh, the first that, that was the first example. Friction is a uh, a uh, first giveaway if present. Friction is a first giveaway that irreversibility will be present uh, as a feature of, of your system, no matter how complicated. Next, meaning my second example, <coughs> is uh, essentially the same, <laughs> the same example. Uh, by changing the language. In this case, uh, instead of friction, I will, uh, I will invoke another flow that proceeds from high to low. 
and that is heat transfer. So that as a as a feature of irreversible <coughs> behavior, irreversible flow. <coughs> Here is the closed system, meaning I'm not stupid. I like, I just discovered it's easier to make an argument by not complicating my argument. So the simplest uh, territory in which to play this, uh, to kick this ball is closed systems that operate in steady state. So this is the same, the same kind of system. Steady state. Uh, it is uh, one dimensional, meaning you can uh, read it on the vertical. It stretches between uh, two uh, uh, entities, one at uh, high temperature, let's put it here. The other one, in other words, this is the TL space, and this is the, sorry. The high temperature, low temperature, and the system is uh, well material. It could be anything, but it's uh, uh, stationary, not moving. Meaning no discernible flow. Meaning no, no visible moving parts. Meaning it could be a brick, but it could also be a layer of uh, uh, water that is. Uh, uh, stagnant, and um, and most the layers of water are stagnant if uh, the the upper side is warmer than the than the bottom, warm, cold, and from uh, warm to cold, there is a, um, a heat transfer rate that. Uh, everybody knows, even without invoking the first law, is conserved. But uh, let's not make assumptions that uh, may be incorrect. So we invoke the law because the law, the law is, uh, is true. In this, why? Because everything obeys the law. So first law. The first law would say that uh, for the system, uh, the uh, energy inventory increases at the rate of um, um, energy flowing in uh, minus, uh, in this case, energy flowing out. In fact, we can, uh, let's give uh, some uh, subscripts here to uh, to make the uh, mathematics agree with the drawing. And in steady state, we have a zero on the left hand side. And yes, uh, the Q, Q um, the, the heat current is conserved. The second law, you notice here that I'm not being a uh, Highly creative. I'm just <laughs> repeating, repeating myself. The second law. I'm actually repeating myself because I wrote these things last night. This way. <laughs> um, the second law um, is expressed analytically as an entropy generation rate, um, defined as uh, entropy flowing out. Minus entropy. Uh, entering, and the law dictates that the entropy generation rate cannot be <coughs> negative. You know the uh, the lingo. If uh, the entropy generation rate is zero, that's called the reversible uh, uh, process or rate of change. In this case. The other sign, which is, which is the truth about nature, is uh, called irreversible. Irreversible 
sequence of processes per unit time described this way. Um, okay, and it is in fact uh, uh, a greater than zero sign because uh, this uh, denominator is smaller than the other one. So heat transfer um, across a space uh, defined by a temperature difference is uh, called irreversible, irreversible process or uh, behavior. Just like uh, friction on this other side of the blackboard. And um, now the uh, challenge here, when you want to compare friction, you can rub your palms and see and feel it with uh, this other uh, thing where nothing moves, meaning heat leak across a brick. By the way, the brick is uh, the wall of your, uh, of your uh, room. Um, it leaks heat to the ambient. Uh, the difficulty uh, comes from the fact that uh, not uh, everybody has the power of imagining Imagining what I drew here. What I drew here is in fact a picture of not just the conservation of, uh, of uh, heat transfer rate. I'm implying that I drew here a picture of irreversible behavior. Why is this arrow oriented downward? Always downward. And um, when I asked myself this question, obviously in front of a, of a uh, group of students, I, um, I, imagine, I remember being at your stage because I came up with the answer to this uh, question when I was a uh, doctoral student. When I was a doctoral student, um, uh, like almost every other doctoral student, students at uh, MIT, um, I was uh, supported by being a teaching assistant, meaning I was paid um, not as a research assistant, but as, a, as an instructor. And um, yeah, I was teaching thermodynamics even before graduation. The point is, the, sorry, the, 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 <laughs> the, uh, the, the, the seed of the story is that um, uh, I was challenged to come up with the problems for the final exam in the course. I was teaching the course, thermodynamics course, to the uh, Navy ROTC students at MIT. This is, was and still is a major uh, contribution that the Institute makes. And uh, I thought about this question. Where is the friction if, if this is a picture of irreversibility just like over here? And the problem I wrote is what I'm going to show you next. In fact, I erased the hint. The hint was this uh, system here, uh, the name of, of which was any. And because I, uh, I was trained in graphics, I said, well, you know, let me, uh, let me, draw, uh, let me draw something inside this any system. I draw the same system with the same uh, streams that, uh, that uh, feed it and drain it. But inside the any system, I have the freedom to imagine uh, the drawing of interest. And I made a drawing of friction. A heat input that arrives from a temperature different than the so-called rejection. This combination of three things, Q dot H, high temperature and low temperature together is the, um, the um, the fingerprint 
not the fingerprint. It's like the color of the uh, of the coat of the animal in the bush. The uh, the 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 ability, meaning human ability, to ad to identify uh, an opportunity. I refer to hunting. In this case, the opportunity to produce power. These are the three items that, if present, uh, suggests su suggest together the the possibility of uh, of uh, the existence of an engine. Well, here's that engine. And it operates in cycles because this is this whole thing, the any is operating in steady state. And um, the, uh, the engine is driven by Q dot H. It rejects uh, a, um, a stream of uh, heating, which is the difference between the Q dot H and the power that the engine produces. So this uh, W is Q dot H minus the heat rejection rate, which I'll call Q dot L engine. You see? So, I made this drawing because I'm not violating anything. I made it because I, I have the freedom to imagine. All of you are engineering, with the exception of Jacob, right? All of you are studying engineering, <clears throat> but it, in medicine is the same thing. Uh, uh, it, you are trained to imagine uh, new designs, meaning um, cures or um, ways in which to to uh, change something toward the better. It's the same in engineering, yeah, but you cannot imagine <laughs> uh, those things unless you have the freedom, the freedom to uh, to look beyond what is known or what is observable. So here it is. And when I wrote this uh, first step, I had to say, wait a second, aha, uh -huh. this uh, power that uh, my imaginary engine uh, produces cannot get out of the any system. There is no exit. No exit. This boundary is just like the frontier of a communist state. You could not run away. So, funny now, but back then it wasn't. <laughs> and uh, what happens to this uh, power produced by the engine? It gets dissipated inside an equally ima imag imaginary break. and dissipate it into heat, or heat transfer, the size of which is the same as uh, this W dot. So the heat transfer rejected by the brake is the same number of watts as W dot. And that is why from the outside of the uh, of the closed system, Q dot L is the same as it ever was, namely meaning in reality, Q dot L is Q dot L because it is the sum of uh, of uh, Q dot L from the engine <coughs> plus this uh, Q dot B, which is of course W. And W is, of course, uh, Q dot H minus uh, Q dot L from the engine. So, in the end, the 
flow of uh, chelate H is conserved across the, uh, the any system. All right. This uh, this is really not the the end of uh, of uh, of uh, let's say nice nice uh, memories. Uh, when I wrote this thing in the early seventies, I uh, made the assumption that uh, the engine is a Carnot engine. In other words, that um, the uh, the innards, the imaginary organs of this empty box um, are of two kinds. One organ that's uh, free of irreversibility and the other one is full of ir irreversibility. Um, I don't know why I made that uh, assumption, but that's the way I published it back then. And um, Subsequently, as you saw in my presentation, uh, it became obvious where I, I had a, let's call it not a very impressive aha, uh -huh, uh, the, the last, which is that uh, the Carnot engine assumption is not necessary. Any engine produces some uh, W dot, and which has to be um, dissipated for this drawing to be the same as this drawing. Okay, so uh, if you can, if you cannot force yourself to remember that heat transfer rate across a finite temperature difference uh, is a uh, sign of irreversibility, then think of it as friction in accord with this uh, homework problem from when I was uh, a student. For those of you who uh, will be uh, engaging in research. Uh, get from here the message that uh, you are most creative at your age today when you are students. And it is now that you should uh, uh, ask questions and keep asking questions, especially ask questions uh, of your own. Don't wait for questions from the authorities. Just question yourself. Any questions?